DNA molecules are important biological molecules whose function is to store the genetic information that is found within our biological cells. Now, whenever a given organism actually wants to reproduce, one important thing that must take place is the DNA must be replicated within our cells. So in the next several lectures, we're going to discuss the process of DNA replication and how it actually proceeds. And let's begin with the process of unwinding. So recall that any given DNA molecule actually consists of two individual and complementary single-stranded DNA molecules and these two single-stranded molecules basically combine via an anti-parallel fashion to form our double helix and the bonds that hold our two individual complementary single-stranded DNA molecules are hydrogen bonds between our adjacent nitrogenous bases. Now, the question is, what exactly is the first process that takes place when our DNA replicates? Well, before our DNA is replicated, what must happen is our double-stranded DNA molecule must actually unwind. So we see that in order for replication to actually occur, the two strands of DNA must first unwind. Now the problem is a double-stranded DNA molecule wants to naturally exist as a double strand because that is a stabilizing form. So to actually unwind our molecule, our cell must use special types of proteins, special types of enzymes known as the helicase enzyme. So our helicase binds to a location on our double-stranded DNA known as the origin of replication and it basically acts to unwind our double-stranded DNA. And since the two strands of DNA naturally wants to want to reform those hydrogen bonds because that forms a stabilizing effect, we have a different set of proteins of enzymes known as single-stranded binding proteins or simply SSB proteins that also have to bind to the individual unwound single-stranded uh, DNA molecules and, and once they bind, they stabilize those molecules and keep those DNA molecules apart. So, to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following picture. So, in diagram one, we basically have our two single-stranded DNAs, so DNA one and DNA two, and we form this double helix structure. Now, when our helicase or helicase actually binds to the origin of replication, it unwinds that double-stranded DNA. And once our two single-stranded DNAs are exposed and once we unwind, it, we have the single-stranded binding proteins bind to each of these two uh, single strands and that keeps those two strands apart. Now, as helicase unwinds our double helix, that unwinding process actually introduces positive supercoils. And positive supercoils basically destabilize our molecule by increasing its energy. So to stabilize the unwound DNA molecule, a protein known as DNA gyrase has to bind to our molecule and it introduces negative negative supercoils which decreases the number of positive supercoils and therefore stabilizes by decreasing the amount of stress that our molecule experiences. Now, once the helicase unwinds our DNA, from this picture we see that we expose these individual complementary single-stranded DNA molecules. And once we expose these two molecules, 
another type of enzyme known as primase, which is basically an RNA polymerase, binds to each one of these two individual and exposed single-stranded DNA molecules and it adds a set or a series of uh, nucleotides that together are known as RNA primer. So primase adds a series of nucleotides onto these two exposed single-stranded DNA molecules and these are known as RNA primer. An RNA primer basically acts as a signal and signals for another protein known as DNA polymerase to actually bind to that primer region and initiate DNA replication. So basically the DNA polymerase binds to the primer region and adds individual nucleotides one by one extending our synthesized um, strand known as the daughter strand. So basically the single-stranded DNA molecule that is being synthesized is known as the daughter strand but the actual original DNA single-stranded molecule that is used as a template to synthesize the new molecule is known as the parent strand. So Let's take a look at the following diagram. So we have our double helix DNA that basically unwinds in this location as soon as the helicase protein as well as the other proteins bind to the origin of replication. So we can imagine the group of proteins that includes our helicase binds to our origin of replication that unzips or unwinds our DNA double strand to expose these two single-stranded molecules that are known as the parent strands. So we have our primase that creates the RNA primer that is shown in green and the RNA primer is basically a series of nucleotides that signal the beginning of our replication. It signals for our DNA polymerase shown in red to bind to that primer region and initiate our replication process. We also have the SSB proteins that bind to the individual strands thereby stabilizing them which keeps them apart and keeps them from reforming that double helix. And as time progresses our DNA polymerase shown in red basically moves along our parent strand and synthesizes our daughter strand one nucleotide at a time. Now, two important things that we have to remember about DNA replication is the following two concepts. So, firstly, DNA replication is a, is a semi-conservative process, which means that once we form our new DNA, one of the single-stranded DNA molecules is the new synthesized one, and the other one comes from our original DNA molecule that we used as a template. So for example, if we have a single DNA molecule and it undergoes DNA replication, we essentially form two DNA molecules and each one of those two DNA molecules contains one new synthesized strand and one original parent strand that came from the original DNA molecule and this is what we mean by a semi-conservative process. Now once the proteins, once the group of proteins binds to the DNA molecule at the point of origin, replication proceeds bo on both strands, but it takes place in opposite directions. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose we have the original DNA molecule shown. We have one of the strands shown in blue and the second parent strand is shown with this uh, brown color. 
Now, what basically happens is our groups of proteins, including our helicase, binds to the point of origin, let's suppose, in this location. And one of the newly synthesized uh, single-stranded DNA molecules in, is synthesized in this direction, and the other DNA molecule, the other single-stranded DNA molecule, the daughter strand, is synthesized in the opposite direction. And the fact that DNA replication takes place on both strands and in opposite directions is known as a bidirectional process. So this may makes it a bidirectional process. So DNA replication is both semi-conservative and it's a bidirectional process. And as we'll discuss in the next lecture, one of these strands is known as the leading strand because our um, nucleotides are added continuously one by one along a single direction. And the other strand is known as the lagging strand because it is synthesized in a discontinuous fashion as we'll discuss in the next lecture.